How can something be massive and at the same time invisible? That's the mystery of black holes, the remnants of stars that scientists believe hold essential information about our universe. At Northwestern, researchers are paying special attention to black holes and bringing new information to classrooms at many levels. I'd like us, Tyler and Kashyap, since you're leading the discussion, to start from the gravitational wave material. Professor Vicky Caligera is teaching some very far out ideas. In this freshman seminar about astronomy, Caligera is helping students understand how black holes work. If two black holes are going one, one around the other, you get strong gravitational waves. But two suns going one around the other, you wouldn't get it. What's the difference? Well, uh, black holes in, uh, are compact objects, so, so they uh, warp space-time uh, at a much greater degree. So. Exactly. So that Caligara and her students will look at a wide range of extreme astronomy phenomena, not just black holes. But the study of these massive bodies is an example of how Caligara and her colleagues lead discussions in the classroom and in the research world. We're looking at the system now. At Northwestern, Caligara is the co-director of Sierra, the Center for Interdisciplinary Exploration and Research in Astrophysics, a team of faculty, graduate and postdoctoral students across schools and departments many devoted to greater understanding of black holes. The black hole is coupled with a star that is giving mass to it. So an energy is released and we can observe black holes ex as X-ray sources. Black holes are often formed by the collapse of big stars, more massive than 10 times the mass of our sun. They are the most compact objects in the universe, so dense they emit no light. Their gravity is super strong. They have a lot of mass concentrated in a tiny little volume. Um, so if the sun, for example, were a black hole, it wouldn't be as big as it is, but it would be smaller than the metropolitan Chicago area. Black holes come in different sizes. Professor Farhad Zadeh studies supermassive black holes, which exist at the center of galaxies. There is up to a certain point that you can have a massive star and eventually uh, collapses and form a black hole, and this is a seed black hole. And then over the age of the universe, matter accretes onto this black hole and becomes bigger and bigger. There are also what are known as stellar mass black holes. They're comparatively much smaller, about 10 to 20 times the mass of our sun. Caligera showed us animation based on their research data, which explains how these smaller black holes can be detected. The movie shows how, with its gravitational pull, the black hole draws a massive star near to it, then works like a vacuum cleaner. So this is the process of uh, feeding accretion onto the black hole. Because black holes are black and they don't emit any light, not even light can escape from them, if they are not interacting with something else, it's in very hard to observe them. Animations like this develop from theory. Sierra astronomers create models on computers. The computer is an astronomer's lab in the sense that we cannot run an actual experiment, but we can run a computational experiment. Then they test their theories with data from telescopes and other instruments. Coming up, the program's graduate students get out in the community. I, I really like blowing people's minds. And bring their research to high school classrooms. I, I'm doing simulations of pretty massive um, globular clusters um, around a, a million stars. And These are some pretty smart people sitting around a table. They're all members of Sierra, Northwestern's research center, talking about their collaborative work in physics, astronomy, and computation. As they let off energy and gravitational radiation, they're going to be getting closer and closer to one another. One of them is Ben Farr, a Northwestern graduate student. Far studies gravitational waves, ripples in space-time emitted from the merger of massive bodies such as black holes. But Far spends a lot of time away from his desk. He makes appearances in classes at Northwestern. You can see that in the light that we collect down here at the photo detector. And in classes at Evanston Township High School. We said how we define a black hole, but where does it come from? In fact, his involvement at the high school is funded by the National Science Foundation. This program, called Reach for the Stars, 
is part of a nationwide effort to bring the latest science to secondary schools. And I throw a ball in space, it travels in a straight line, right? One of the things Farr wants these students to understand is gravity. With the help of some stretched fabric, Farr shows how gravity is created when massive objects curve space. It's going to go towards it, right? It's going to bend it out of a straight line. Either a deflection of a straight path, or we can even get into an orbit around it, right? So what Einstein said is, think about space like a fabric. And mass causes curvature in this fabric. And that's how we see gravity. When Farr puts a heavier ball in the fabric... You get stronger deflections in the travel of the ball. And we can even get orbit around it, maybe. The curvature of space is central to Farr's teaching on gravitational waves. The principle is demonstrated by this animation. Two massive objects, such as stars or black holes, orbit each other and ultimately close in and collide. The motion, scientists theorize, makes waves, ripples in space that could be detected. So far, gravitational waves have not been observed directly. The idea of learning about the waves and how to prove that they're actually out there is amazing. To understand something that you can't even see. Joe Matias Shelbert is the high school astronomy teacher. He says the students aren't the only ones benefiting from Farr's cutting-edge research. Oh, I am learning tons. He brings in ideas and activities and creates models on the computer that I can use not just this year, but year after year after year. And for his part, Ben Farr is helping Sierra and Northwestern fulfill an important mission, bringing the stars a little closer down to Earth. I think it's great to be able to go to a high school and just tell them about all the crazy things that are happening in the universe, but also get them to understand the, the underlying theories and everything that go into all of this research that people are doing these days.